Hellwagon joins us from Buck Nuts. You got to catch his work there at 247 Sports. He is a, a Big Ten a senior writer as well. All right, Steve, we saw um, the big game that we were waiting for a couple of weeks ago. Don't think that we've talked as since Ohio State and TCU. It was certainly a game in which Nick Bosa made his presence felt, and that's not going to be the case for the next eight weeks or so. Uh, the distinction that I'm making in the Bosa play versus uh, some of the play of some of the other fine players up front is not necessarily the athleticism because they've got arguably the best defensive front in college football and the deepest, but it just seems like Bosa's at another level in regards to his, he, you could put him on an NFL field tomorrow and he wouldn't be out of place. Uh, so they're really going to mess, miss not only his athleticism, but just his ability to, to play at that level uh, on a college football field. He's just at, at another level that they're going to need other guys to fill in, to make those kind of plays, those kind of disruptive plays. Definitely. I think uh, it'll be a committee approach. Uh, they'll have Chase Young will start the game. Again, at defensive end, Jonathan Cooper's been starting at the other end position. You bring in Jay Sean Cornell. You bring in Tyreek Smith off the bench. And I think in some pass rush situations, you may put Draymond Jones out at defensive end as well. And, uh, you know, or uh, however you want to do it with uh, the different uh, packages because you've got some pretty good defensive tackles. With Robert Landers, Devon Hamilton in the middle, you got some flexibility. So uh, this is going to be a tough test for them with Penn State. Um, I've been impressed with what I've seen at Penn State. I've watched all four of their games, uh, their offensive line. Um, and I would say this about their team across the board. I don't see a lot of All-American you know, talent, not a Saquon Barkley, who just leaps off the page at you. But I see a lot of guys who are very good players potentially all Big Ten caliber players. So uh, it's going to be a great challenge, I think, for Ohio State, and particularly up front, trying to contain uh, the quarterback, Trace McSorley, keep him in the pocket and not let him get outside, break, contain, and make plays with his feet. Uh, Alex Grinch, Ohio State's co-defensive coordinator the other day, had a very good comment that you may have the right defense called for the first play that Penn State calls, but when he breaks contain, or takes off out of the pocket, it triggers a second play with guys coming back to the ball and all these other things, and that's where he's most uh, deadly, most dangerous, and you better have a plan in place for that second play as well. So I guess we'll see how Ohio State, uh, if they can make Penn State have to go to that second play, how they defend it. Yeah, he's a kid that I don't necessarily know how he translates to the next level, but as a college quarterback, he – has put it all together in regards to arm <laughs> talent, mobility, escaping the pocket, improvising at the right times, leadership, gamesmanship, tough kid. He pretty much checks all the boxes for a college quarterback. Uh, Steve, you mentioned briefly the Penn State offensive line. I would point to the Penn State offensive line versus the Buckeyes defensive front as being what's been the biggest advantage for this football team, meaning Ohio State over the last few years. Penn State came off the scholarship issues. They started to build back. They built in other areas. And the, the offensive line seems to have been the last one to catch up with the rest of the team. But this would certainly, you would think, would prove to be the best Penn State offensive line that we've seen in years. Definitely. They're starting uh, two juniors and three sophomores on their offensive line. Uh, they've got uh, Ryan Bates is their left tackle. 6'4", 302 pounds. I've been very impressed with what I've seen out of him. Uh, Connor McGovern was the center last year, kind of like Ohio State, uh, although he moved in the opposite direction. Michael Jordan did for Ohio State. Jordan moved from guard to center. Uh, Connor McGovern has moved from center to right guard, and that allowed them to put Michael Manette, or Manet, I'm not sure uh, how you pronounce that, uh, 6'4", 298-pound sophomore. He's playing the center position. And then, of course, uh, Steven Gonzalez is at left guard. Uh, he's an outstanding player as well. So uh, their offensive line is really starting to come into its own. Uh, you know, again, as I said, they don't have anybody who you just say off oh, you know, that's their All-American. And if that's true, you really across the line, but they've got a lot of very good to great players on this team. There's no question about it. 
You know, it's been a few weeks since we talked about Dwayne Haskins. I think we were leading into the TCU game. Obviously, they had some issues on offense. Uh, it wasn't due to poor play at the quarterback position, then really exploded with some big uh, big plays downfield in the passing game in the second half when they broke out to the lead and took control of the game against TCU. And other than that, Dwayne Haskins has been lights out. Do you recall an Ohio State quarterback and I know this is a difficult question because the sample size is so small, but uh, just playing at this level has, has just, uh, he's been almost flawless. Yeah, he has been uncanny so far. I think he's completing about 75, 76% of his passes, which is an outrageous number and uh, 16 touchdowns, one interception. In uh, Big Ten history, the only guy with more touchdowns through four games was Kyle Orton had 17 for Purdue in 2004 through his first four games. Now, again, some of this is the caliber of the competition. I don't think Rutgers, Oregon State, and uh, Tulane are going to combine uh, to win very many FBS games this year. But, again, cracking myself up just thinking about it. Certainly Rutgers, uh, if they can't stay within uh, six touchdowns <laughs> of uh, Kansas, they, they, they certainly uh, are in for yeah. a rough year. Yeah, they definitely are. So um, at any rate, he's done an outstanding job of being a leader for this team as a third-year sophomore, a guy that uh, everybody can uh, depend on. They have great confidence in him. So I think that, uh, again, we're going. they are going into another very difficult situation, difficult environment. Um, the thing I would say is that both these defenses have uh, given up some plays in some points this year. Penn State gave up 38 points to App State, 24 points last Friday to Illinois. So I guess uh, we'll get into this game and see if the Buckeyes can move the chains, get some first downs, put the ball in the end zone. Uh, they've been a machine in the first half of games this year, other than TCU, obviously, which in the second half they played lights out. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, – what this game brings because it's going to be in my mind uh, a real offensive shootout i think on both sides steve hillwagon joining us from uh, bucknuts uh steve uh, i saw a statistic last week i can't believe it that the linebackers did not make a tackle in last week's game is that true did you come across that yeah the starting linebackers malik harrison tough borland okay. and uh the third one would be pete werner uh those guys only played about a half it was uh, 42 to 6 at halftime. I think that uh, Tulane had gone three and out on several of its possessions. Uh, there were a lot of negative plays. The defensive line made behind the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure that there were a lot of opportunities uh, there for the linebackers. But they got those three guys who started most of the starters out of the game at halftime. They played the second half. And Ohio State. Uh, Outscored them seven to nothing in the second half. Won the game forty nine to six, and I don't think that they really had that much of a care uh, who was out there in the second half. So, yeah, I think it's interesting, uh, troubling, potentially. Uh, you're talking about a Penn State team. I think they rushed for three hundred and sixty five or three hundred and seventy yards last week against Illinois. We know how much stress McSorley can put on a defense and on the linebackers in particular when it comes down to keeping him hemmed in the pocket or stopping him on the quarterback draw. Those are two things the linebackers must be able to do, and they're going to be put on the gun. I think that that's no doubt about it. Miles Sanders has helped everybody kind of uh, soothe the blow of losing Saquon Barkley. He's got almost 500 yards in four games himself, Miles Sanders. So Ohio State's linebackers are going to be tested. Uh, Pitt State's got three pretty good tight ends. They lost Kasicki. But as I look here, they've got Holland, Dalton, and Fryermuth, who have all made plays early in the season the tight end position. So Ohio State's linebackers are going to be put under major stress in this game. My guess is they're going to rotate players in and out. Dante Booker has played uh, some good football here last week at outside linebacker for the Buckeyes. Baron Browning could be in the middle in place of Tough Borland or perhaps outside linebacker as well. So I think it'll be interesting to see how the Buckeyes rotate those linebackers, and most importantly, how well they play. This is the game of the year. You lose this game, I mean, it's an uphill battle to win the division if you lose this game. 
and uh, you'd have to basically win out and hope that Penn State loses twice. Now, there are losable games on Penn State's schedule. Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan State, they've got some tough games ahead. Ohio State really got the benefit of the doubt on those crossovers. When you're talking about having to play Minnesota, Purdue, which has one win now, and Nebraska, which has no wins. So uh, Ohio State really got the luck of the draw on that, but do have to go on the road this game at Penn State this week and have to go in there and really come out with a win if they're going to stay in the national championship hunt and really to have a realistic, uh, a strong shot of winning the division. Yeah, those crossover games are something that we reviewed and analyzed during the offseason. I looked at each and every team, actually went through the entire Power Five, but specifically in the Big Ten, if you think about it, obviously there are three crossover games. Those teams all played nine conference games, so you've got 27 games against the other division. And there was as large a disparity as one team playing at three teams schedule from the other division, where those three teams last year went 20 and seven in the Big Ten as opposed to a 6-21 and 21 record for somebody who played three other teams. I just think there should be something done about that. But uh, that's, a, that's an off-season uh, uh, debate and uh, discussion right there. So I didn't get the chance, uh, Steve, to hear the news conference from Urban Meyer or James Franklin on Monday. Um, uh, are the Buckeyes hobbled up? I know that um, Mike Weber uh, was banged up a little bit. Uh, any injury concerns? Weber had a foot strain, and he only played a few plays against Tulane last week. He was injured when he went out of bounds, and a player uh, rolled up on his ankle. And so he left that game and uh, didn't play the rest of the game. But Coach Meyer said he's been back at practice. Seeing, we saw him walking around after practice yesterday. Seemed like he was doing pretty good. So uh, he's expected to play. I would imagine J.K. Dobbins will start and get most of the work. Uh, Michael would be there as a changeup back. Uh, they've moved to Mario McCall, who's been kind of a hybrid running back wide receiver. He's been back at running back a little bit. They've got Master Teague there as well. So you got four pretty good players uh, that they'll rotate, my guess, uh, primarily Dobbins and Weber. But uh, it sounds like Weber should be close to 100%. And uh, other than that, the Buckeyes seem to be in great shape, other than obviously Nick Bosa is not going to play uh, for a few more weeks, underwent surgery last week uh, on a core muscle to repair that. And uh, seems like uh, he'll be out till early November at least. So I guess uh, it'll just be a wait and see thing with him. But otherwise, Ohio State seems pretty healthy going into this game. Steve, your experience with Ohio State football just uh, doesn't include the Big Ten stops, obviously, all the big non-conference games, the bowl matchups, and, and so forth and so on. That scene in Happy Valley with the whiteout, the crowd, the noise, what you experienced two years ago was probably at fever pitch compared to some other years. 2014 was a great game as well. Um, is that about as loud and fervent a crowd, road crowd, as you've seen in your experience? Oh, it's number one. There's no question about it. When you're talking about 107,000 people, and, uh, you know, the enthusiasm and the fervor that they generate, I mean, that setting at Beaver Stadium is probably number one on the list among all the visiting places I've been. I think Ohio Stadium obviously is a tough place for visitors to come in for a big game. I'm not sure it is for a run-of-the-mill game. Uh, Penn State's got it all over the University of Michigan. There's no question in my mind about that. Uh, Wisconsin can be a very difficult place to play for a visiting team, particularly for a night game. Uh, Iowa can be, as Ohio State found out last year, pretty hard place to play. But, uh, yeah, I would say Penn State's got to be number one, certainly in the top five nationally as one of the toughest places for a visiting team to play. And, and we add in the night game, the whiteout and everything else that involved with it, uh, it's really off the hook. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun place. And even Urban Meyer admitted, tipped his cap and said it's a great place to watch a college football game. He said, our goal will be going there to win the game, and uh, certainly that's what Penn State's going to try and do as well. So it's uh, it's going to be a fun one. We benefit on a regular basis from the wealth of knowledge and insight into Ohio State football in the Big Ten from Steve Hellwagon. Uh, Bucknuts 247, you got to join him right there for the very best in Ohio State football coverage. Steve, we appreciate you stopping by, sir. All right, Mark. Take care.